I'm Joe from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. We're going to talk about some watercolor, some acrylic, lifting, repairing. I'm glad to be here, by the way. First thing I do is uh, make a blotter. And I know many of you know about the blotter, but this is an old Zoltan Zabo trick. And this is Viva Paper Towel. And it's my favorite because it has no pattern to it. And if you use a paper towel with pattern, and especially if you're drying your paper with it, it will leave that pattern on the paper. And so I'm taking one, two, three sections of paper towel, folding it in half, take a partial roll of toilet tissue, and simply roll it up in here, just like that. Then I'll mash it flat, and that becomes my blotter, because watercolor is color and water. Too much water and not enough color. Too much color and no water and it's too thick and it doesn't work so good so we have to reach that happy medium in there and that's how we do it with that blotter i've drawn a little scene on terra skin which is a relatively new paper for watercolor or acrylic or oil or about anything you'd like to use it with it's very very versatile and i really like it because of what it does so we may not finish it here but we're going to give it a good start I drew it with a watercolor pencil, and I'll explain that because I have two light colored ones there and two dark colored ones here. I'll lay the light colored ones over to one side. This is uh, dark blue, and that's what I've drawn with right here. And the reason I draw with a watercolor pencil, we'll put something back here to show you how easy it is to draw. If you draw with a pencil on terra skin, it's very difficult to erase. If you want it to change something that's already here and you try to use a red eraser, a white one, a plastic, a gum eraser, whatever, it just makes a mess. Whereas with this, it is so easy to do. So I've made uh, some marks with the colored pencil here and I simply take a French scrubber, which is a little brush that has bristles, heavy bristles, and they're trimmed around. They're a very handy little brush for lifting. And I'll wet it a little bit and then I'll scrub it with the Fritsch scrubber. And applying some pressure to it so that it actually is lifted. And then I'll take a tissue and lift it and it's gone. If I do that with a pencil, it just makes a mess. It just, the graphite will not come out of this terra skin. Which, by the way, the terra skin is made of stone. Made of 100% stone. And so it's, uh, it's green, there's no pollution, there's no water used in the manufacturing of it, and it's just a fabulous product. It's similar to Yupo, if you remember Yupo. And now I'm going to come over here and clean this terrible palette that I let get this way, just so I could show you how well it cleans. This is the Cavalcade porcelain palette, and it's my favorite palette. I just really, really like it. Look at this. Amazing. Joe, I can't believe you can do that. Yep, you can. I talk to myself sometimes and I get really good answers. So you can see it just cleans, oh, it goes right back to brand new. And this thing must be 10 years old that I've used it all those years and still love it. Now I'm gonna put in some dark color in the top for the sky. And when that's semi dry, I'm going to spatter it a little bit with white paint. And th this is uh, titanium white that already has paint on the tube where I've allowed that to happen. And I use a little container like this. Some food came in this, as you can tell, for my white. And I'll squeeze out a pretty good little glob of it there. Because if I put it on my palette, and I have a little bit in my palette, it tends to get hard before I can get it up. It's like gouache and gouache has chalk in it and so it makes it very difficult to uh, to get up so now i'll activate this white so it will be ready when we're ready for it by adding water and making a very rich you can see how rich that is now another way to do this is a little spray bottle and simply spray water in the container onto the white 
and I think that will do it. So I'll set that right there and it's ready to go and I'll use the toothbrush, this old Pro toothbrush to use for the white. I'll lay it right there and I'll have it ready. Now then, I'll activate some dark blue and I'm going to use midnight blue which in some, this is American Journey. All my paint is American Journey which is our brand which you would expect me to be using. And I'm going to activate that midnight blue which is in Danthrone and deep violet. Beautiful color. Rich. Just looks like it's getting ready to snow. It's so dark and rich and such a beautiful color. Now when you first put the paint on the Terra skin. I'm going to add a little bit of, of alizarin crimson to that to make it a little darker. When you first add color to this, it will just kind of look like it's bubbled and it will paint around some of these trees. Some of the trees are going to come up into the sky and I'm going to come all the way across with it and now I'll come down to the bank where the snow line is right there, just like that, and come right on across. Now I'm going to change colors now. I'm going to have more yellow in it and it's going to be quinacridone right in here. And it kind of didn't do what I wanted it to do, so I'll add a little bit of red. And Yeah, there we go. It still has a, a little bit of that in there, so I'll take this fridge scrubber, just like we did over there on the other one, and I'll scrub that out. And I'll simply come back over it, and it's gone. And while that's kind of working that way, I'm going to take this white paint and the toothbrush and just barely hit it in here and pick up some of the paint. And then I'm going to take a tissue and hold it in my left hand, or if you're, you're vice versa. And I'm going to hold it like this because there's a drop of water or color right there and it's going to go really heavy. This prevents that from doing that. Now I'll take my thumb just like this and I'll spatter that. Wow, look at that. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. And that's going to make a real faint snow or star way back there. And you'll see it kind of disappear. Then a little later, we'll put a little more, and a little later, a little more, and it'll finally look like just like snow. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is come into that tree line that's in there, and I'm going to use this quinacridone gold and endanthrone, and we're going to maybe, I'm going to add a little more of that gold color just keeping a variety of color going. I forgot to tell you, I taped this paper to my gator board so that it won't buckle up and bend or whatever. So there's the, there's the snow mountain. Behind it back there is this ridge of trees way back there. So we'll put those in. Down here is some are, are some more trees that come up through there. We'll add some more of this green that's picking up these colors on the table. Now you probably right now wonder what in the world's going on, and I think it'll all come to light in just a short time. A thirsty brush is a brush that's clean. The water has been taken out, and then I take even more water out just like that by squeezing it. Now I'm going to continue the negative painting around the barn. And then we may take a, a little break from it, but I want you to see what happens here. I'm going to leave a tree trunk right there, negative painting, another one here, and here, and one here. I'm going to add a little yellow in here too, by the way. Come up there like that. You'll see what this is all about. In just a minute, it'll all come together. All kinds of things happening here, and that just happens. That's the paper and the paint doing it. I'm not doing that. It does it by itself, which is really nice because you can get these wonderful textures in there. Now I'm going to add some color into this barn so you can see some bright red. We're going to have a bright red barn right here. And you can see this begin to come to life now. Wow, that's sure a pretty red. That is, by the way, Joe's red. Now we're going to ha have to determine where the light's coming from and we're going to add some really dark color on the other side. So I think I have the light coming here, meaning that this, this side of this silo is darker, just like that. This side of this barn is darker, and under this eave is darker. And now we'll take a little break and come back in just a minute and we'll see where we are. <laughs> 